Furrier's Gamecocks walk through their loyal fans. And just a few minutes later, the head ball coach's former team arrived with Urban Meyer leading the charge. South Carolina and Florida, it's time to play some football. Let's play some football! some football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. The old ball coach wearing some different colors this year. Steve Spurrier, you could probably say he's ready to get this one underway to face the new ball coach down in Gainesville, Florida, Urban Meyer. It has been the talk of college football and we are just about set for this matchup between the 12th ranked Florida Gators at 7-2 and two and the 6-3 and three bowl eligible South Carolina Gamecocks it should be a fun afternoon of football on our all tell SEC Game of the Week. And hello, everybody. I am Dave Neal. So glad you could join us. And really, you have to go back to November 23rd of last year. And that's when the discussion about this particular game started. From coast to coast, it has been a focal point in college football. Well, it is here now, and both coaches have kind of downplayed it. But you still have to think Steve Spurrier really wants to win this one. A 1966 Heisman Trophy winner for the Florida Gators. He won six official SEC crowns as their head coach and, of course, won the 96th National Championship for the Florida Gators. But all that aside, there is still a lot to play for here in 2005 for both of these teams. That is an Eastern Division Championship. Georgia can win it outright. All they need to do, regardless of what anybody else does, is beat Auburn today and then Kentucky next week. For Florida, all they have to do is win today and hope that Georgia loses one of their next two. South Carolina, they're still in this race, believe it or not. They need a win today and hope Georgia loses to the Tigers and the Wildcats. Joining me, my partner Dave Rowe. And Dave, I know this. I'm excited about this. I know you're excited about it. But I mean, realistically, this has been played up quite a bit. But it's time to play the game today. Absolutely, Dave. Emotion's a great thing. It's great for the fans. It's great for the media. And it's great for us. Right. But now it's time to buckle up those chin straps and let's play some football. And when you start talking about football, the first person from Florida you think of is Chris Leak. And he has made some great adjustments the last two weeks. He's been very comfortable with this offense. On the other side of the ball, all the eyes go to Blake Mitchell and Sidney Rice, but I think it's going to come down to a ground game, and if it does, that means that Mike Davis has got to step up big. Yeah, he had a, break, a great game against Arkansas last week. We'll see what he does today. Let's take a look at your Toyota keys to the game. Well, Dave, we always talk about the offense, but today let's look at the defense. The Gators are getting defensive. Florida's defense puts so much pressure on you. They force the ball, need to keep that up. And on the other side of the ball for South Carolina, they need a knockout, and that's by Coach Simpson. He's their tone setter. He leads them in tackles. He has to play his best game of the day, Dave. Then, this is now. South Carolina won the toss, and they will take the football to open up this game. You see the numbers of Steve Spurrier. He says his team has accomplished their goals coming into this. And from here on out, it's kind of a bonus, but they have some momentum winning four straight SEC games, and South Carolina kicks it out of bounds on the opening kickoff. Chris Pittman had the honors for Florida. Let's check in with Dave Baker, who's down on the sideline. Buzz? Hey, Dave, you know the two head coaches are the guys that dictate the offense. The defenses are a little different story. Tyrone Nix played for John Thompson. He coached with Dave Womack on their coach 
coordinators on the South Carolina side of things are Thompson and Nix. On the Florida side of things, Greg Madison, Charlie Strong, they go about it two different ways as well. Strong and Madison, certainly Palmer on the sideline, but I'm telling you, South Carolina defensive coaches have been going crazy today. It goes to the Florida side, though, to try to stop at least early on. We'll see here what South Carolina does. Pretty good field position from the 35. Blake Mitchell with throw and throws it out of bounds looking for McKinley, who was double covered. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups today. And for South Carolina, we told you about Mike Davis in the open. Those 89 yards against Arkansas last week, a season high. Dacus Terman, Dacus Terman bothered by a bad ankle, but Sidney Rice is the big playmaker offensively. Up front, this offensive line has uh, not really seen much consistency. They've only started the same line in consecutive games once this year. And there is Blake Mitchell, the sophomore quarterback for South Carolina, completing 62% of his passes on the year. Steve Spurrier told us yesterday the young man just gets better every single week. And down he goes at the 27-yard line, Marcus Thomas. The junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, with his second sack of the season, and that really backs up the Gamecock offense. Boy, you have to get that pressure in the middle, and that's exactly what Marcus Thomas, number 44, does. Just collapses the pocket, gets that big push. You see how he can't step up in the pocket? Because there's 44 coming right on him. Thomas, 6'3", 285 pounds, bothered by a bad back, and has struggled this week in practice, but obviously the first series here... Hasn't struggled too much. And you see the third down conversions. Ninth in the league for the Gamecocks. Out of the eye formation. Trying to set up a little screen. Mitchell has nowhere to go with it, but he'll throw it away. And that'll bring up a fourth down for the South Carolina offense. The Chevy defensive lineups for the Gators goes like this. A front four that is led by Jeremy Mincy. 57 tackles. Leads his team in total stops. In the middle, you got to look at Brandon Seiler. How about six fumble recoveries? That's tops in the Southeastern Conference. Had a couple last week. In the secondary, of course, they are missing Vernell Brown, a, a big play man on the quarterback position. That means Reggie Lewis will slide over to his spot. A junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, will keep an eye on that as well. Chad Jackson back to return the punt. He calls for everybody to leave it alone because it hits at midfield and it is dropped at the 47-yard line. So outstanding field position coming up for the Gators offensively. A 25-yard punt for Josh Brown, young man who was uh, averaging about 40 yards per kick this year. Chris Leak told us earlier this week, Dave, that last week against Vanderbilt, perhaps he felt as comfortable as he has in this spread option attack of Urban Meyer. Really got into a rhythm, set a career high for completions with 32 in that game. Also had a career high rushing yards. If he's in that same kind of rhythm, watch out. Oh, yeah, and especially when you give him the ball at midfield. Your defense comes out, holds him three and out, and then you just give him right there, and they've got the ball, and he's going. Whoa, he looked like he was going deep, Dave. He wanted to go deep. Instead, he'll run to the side, ran out of bounds by Lance Lorry. Got about a yard on the play, but, yeah, they wanted to go for the home run ball right out of the gates. Chevy lineups for the Gators. Chad Jackson, the man, all he does is catch football. 63 receptions on the year. Also, keep in mind, Dallas Baker suited up in the warm-ups, and we expect him to play despite the fact that he has a broken rib and a punctured lung. Dave Baker will have more on that in a little bit. Up front, Mike DeGore is the man that uh, just keeps getting it done. 48 consecutive starts for the Gators at that center position. That's go in motion. South Carolina's defense goes like this. Oris Lambert, SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week, had an interception against the Razorbacks last week. Jordan Lindsay has done well in his defensive end position. His twin brother, Dustin Lindsay, has three in the last three games, 29 total tackles, and he has just been a starter the last three weeks. Jonathan Joseph, three interceptions, but Coach Simpson, number 10, he's the man that makes it happen. Boy, they got to get a push right now. You want to get pressure. You don't want to let Chris Leak sit back there and look downfield. That's what he does, but it's batted down and intercepted by the Gamecocks at midfield. Down to the 20. Inside, Chris Tucker still on his feet at the 5. Dave, it was tapped in the middle. I thought it might have been 
Dustin Lindsay, 40, who got that hand up. Somebody right in the middle got the hand up. It was, it, the receiver, the person who caught the ball, let's see if we see 40 here. Yes, there's 40, goes up high, gets the tip. Now you see him off and running. What a run by Chris Tucker. The big man, look at him, carrying the ball. Cutting back, getting around blockers. Good night, you want to make him a fullback. 6'1", 290, the senior out of Decatur, Georgia, with a 49-yard interception return, and the Gamecocks set up shop at the five-yard line. First and goal. What a turnaround. Now you've got to capitalize on it. Incomplete, looking for Sidney Rice. Inside the red zone this year for South Carolina, they score about 81% of the time but they are second in terms of touchdown percentage inside the red zone. And you see that turnover story for this uh, South Carolina team. They have really found a way to help themselves gaining those turnovers. That red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Now, I know you look right away. The first thing you start thinking about is going to Sidney Rice, and that's exactly what Blake Mitchell did. But hey, you try to run the ball in. Here's a toss sweep to Mike Davis. Into the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina. Mike Davis, the true freshman from right here in Columbia, South Carolina, brings the crowd to their feet. Boy, and number 32, Dacus Terman, gets a great block downfield. And how about Davis? He went up in the air from about the four or five-yard line out. He was not going to be denied. We said he needed a big day. That's the start of a big day. Point after by Josh Brown is up and good. Florida came in first in the league in turnover margin with a plus 17 in that department. But they had a costly turnover that set the stage for a South Carolina TD. By Stadium, they are busy outside before the game, but they certainly all come inside. And they're glad they did. Hope they got here for the uh, big interception of Chris Tucker. Probably one of the best runs we've seen all year. From a, and it came from a defensive lineman. Did you see him setting up the blockers, Dave? As you were calling it downfield, he was slowing down, letting his blockers get out in front of him. What a run. Gavin Dickey, a former quarterback, moved to wide receiver. That's a season that progressed back in Marcus Nancy to return the kickoff. That's about five yards deep, and Manson will take a knee. So Florida will come out to the 20-yard line. In the last six games, South Carolina has been exceptional turning uh, those turnovers into points and they are third in the league florida is number one and of course when you're plus 17 in the turnover department it's easy to get up there in terms of points off turnovers but south carolina in the last six games now has 15 turnovers that they have turned into 76 points now dave if you're chris lee don't panic get right back into your offense you got a strong offense side handoff goes to manson he gets a couple on the play swarmed by that South Carolina defense, led by Dustin Lindsay, sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. Dustin and his brother Jordan, big Alabama fans growing up, but they weren't offered a scholarship. They were they were invited to come out and become what they call gray shirts, walk on, try to earn a scholarship down the road. But he and his brother wanted to play together, and uh, they decided that uh, South Carolina was a school they liked, and the Gamecocks offered them both scholarships, and here they are, both starting. Yeah. And a big, huge play by Dustin, number 40, middle linebacker, start this game. Here's Lee rolling to the near side. He's got some room. He'll throw it on the run. Pass is caught out at the 37-yard line by Chad Jackson. Coverage by Jonathan Joseph, and that is reception number 64 on the year for Chad. Oh, and that was just great talent there by Chris Lee. Coming out, rolling to his left, they just kind of squared up and delivered that. He had that run option, last minute brought it down and found, found Chad Jackson. That's what he does so well. First down and 10 for the Gators. He throws to the wide side, nearly picked off, but the catch is made by Jackson and he picks up the first down. 
nearly an interception, but the big playmaker, Jackson, turns it into a Gator first down. Well, that's exactly what you ask receivers to do. This is just out in the flat, should be for no game. Now, you run through tackles. You don't allow somebody to bring you down. And that somebody was Coe Simpson on that coverage, and he's the best tackler on this team. Of course, everybody looks at Coe Simpson, Dave. He's the leader of tackles on this team. Leads the SEC in defensive backs. Mm. And off goes to Moore. Moore gets through the middle of that line of scrimmage near the Carolina 40-yard line. That'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Coe Simpson wrapped him up that time. Coe, the sophomore at a Rock Hill, South Carolina. Boy, nice hole right there for Moore. Look right there. You see the block and ways wide open. When he gets in the secondary, nobody's close to him. Now, just rumble and start to come up. You see Simpson come up there, number 10. But uh, that's what you have to do. And the good thing for Florida is they've gotten right back into their offensive flow. They didn't panic. They didn't say, oh, no. They just kind of got right back into it. They're playing well. Five man front for the Gamecocks. Play action. He has time, throws to a wide open. Billy Latch go down the sideline, run out of bounds at the 21 of South Carolina. Marvin Sapp made the tackle. And Dave, if they say that uh, Chris Leak is comfortable, this is when you're comfortable. When you come off your primary receiver, you look across the field. He's looking over here. He's not there. Look how he, right at the last second, he looks back over and finds Latsko out in the flat. That is when you've got full vision of the field. You've got a lot of confidence in your offensive line. A gain of 21 moves it to just outside South Carolina 20. Hit right at the line of scrimmage by Tremaine Tyler. That'll bring up a second down and 10. Now what you're trying to do in this situation if you're South Carolina is keep them out of the end zone. Hold them to a field goal. If you're Florida, you don't want your Urban Meyer. You don't want to settle for a field goal. Your offense has come out. You've driven the ball from the 20-yard line. Just keep it going. Don't stop until you get to the goal line. It's an impressive drive after the interception by Leak. This is the seventh play of this drive. Goes up the middle to Marcus Manson. He takes it down to the 12. A little spotted at the 13-yard line. Horace Lambert. Defensive end with the tackle. In the red zone, this Florida offense scoring about 75% of the time. But last week, that uh, was a pretty successful day, I would say, inside the 25 touchdowns and six possessions. And that red zone look powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Now, if you're Florida, they've been running the ball really well up the middle on that little that little shotgun draw. I think I'd stay right with it. Play action, looking to latch go, and batted away at the last moment by Chris Hampton, the senior from Washington, Georgia, with a big-time defensive play. Once again, Dave, South Carolina's defense give up, gives up some yardage, but they stand tall. In crunch time. Boy, look at number 23. That's Hampton. He comes diving in there. Look at him. See him getting the air. The ball. He plays the ball. Didn't play the man. You've got a right to get up and shake your head. No, they're not going to. Covered a lot of ground, Dave. Chris Hetland lines up for the 30-yard attempt. And it sneaks just in the right upright. So Hetland now, 9 out of 10 on the year. The Gators are on the board. It's a 7-3 game in Columbia. Back to williams Bryce after word from your local station. Back at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia. Steve Spurrier's club gives up the field goal, but they lead it 7-3. Chris Leak, after throwing just his fifth interception of the season, responds on that drive going 4 out of 5 for 48 yards. They stall just shy of the 10-yard line, just inside the 10-yard line, and Chris Hedlund comes up with a 30-yard field goal. yard line where Jonathan Joseph takes it. Joseph has some running room for the 25. Out to the 30 and he is dropped right there. Waltel presents Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge. Today's question, 
which SEC East team was the only one to defeat Steve Spurrier's Gators in Gainesville, Georgia, Tennessee, or South Carolina? Use your all-cell wireless phone to text your answer to short code SEC fan. That's 732-326, or visit jpsports.com to submit your answer. You will be entered to win a trip to the SEC championship game. That is the only SEC East team to win at home against Steve Spurrier. Here's Mike Davis. Davis falls forward to the 35. He gets four and a half on the carry. Davis had uh, 89 yards against Arkansas last week. Had 61 yards in the win versus Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, that Coach Spurrier said to us last week before the Arkansas game, he really challenged Mike Davis. He's got a lot of talent, but he wanted him to be more uh, more physical, a tougher runner with the football. And he said he saw some of that last week. Yeah, exactly. What that means is after you get hit, Dave, you're digging, clawing, squirming, twisting anything you can to get that extra yard. Coaches grade that. It's called yards after contact. Blake Mitchell goes out to a wide receiver. A flag is down. Mike Davis ends up with the football. He gets it close to the 40-yard line. But it looked like a similar play when Savelle Newton was on the yeah. field for South Carolina. Savelle with a torn Achilles. Mr. Versatility for Gamecocks out for the rest of the year. But a flag came down as Blake Mitchell lined up at the top of your screen as a wide receiver. Rocky Good, our referee today. We've got two good referees yes. on hand today. Uh, our, alter, our alternate official is uh, Steve Shaw. So between Rocky Good and Steve Shaw, I think we've got to cover it. Against the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The field is five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Well, there is uh, Mr. Savelle Newton. And one... It's probably one of the biggest offensive powers that this Gamecock team had, perhaps the biggest. And three weeks ago against Vanderbilt, Savelle Newton suffered that season-ending torn Achilles tendon in that left leg on a touchdown run. As you can see, he was carted off the field. The junior had played wide receiver, quarterback, running back during the game and was named the SEC's Offensive Player of the Week. He ran for 80 yards, passed for 46 more, had eight yards as a receiver. Tough loss, but somehow this Gamecock team has found a way to keep it rolling. Speaking of rolling, Mike Davis rolls down. Losing a yard. Yeah, Davis tripped as soon as he got the ball, Dave. And a lot of times when you trip like that, you take your eye off the ball. He was fortunate not to have a fumble there. When he took that ball, he just kind of stutter stepped, and you could see he was going down. <laughs> Boy, for South Carolina, you don't want to come out and do three and out, three and out, three and out. And uh, they're facing a tough situation. Third and about 11. They need to move those chains. Last week, Arkansas ran 72 plays. South Carolina only managed 58, and it's really been the theme. Steve Spurrier would love to have 70 plays offensively. Pass caught by Sidney Rice out over the 40, and that should be good enough for a first down. D. Webb on the coverage for the Gators. But Sidney Rice and his 6'4 frame fell forward enough for the first down. Watch the stretch for this ball. Look at him stretch out there. Catches it high away from his body. And one thing I'll tell you that South Carolina receivers do not do, they do not drop the football. When that ball hits their hands, they know they have to catch it. And Sidney Rice is just outstanding. 12-yard pickup. 47 catches on the year now for Sidney Rice. A couple of tight ends in the game for South Carolina. Mitchell to throw, looking for one of those tight ends. Havlovich couldn't hold on. That'll bring up second down and 10. Good play selection by South Carolina, mixing the ball up. They, they're going to use Mike Davis a lot. Urban Meyer knows that this defense has got to get pressure on Blake Mitchell, but he's got to be aware of that running game, and Mike Davis has come out. Looks like he's, as you said, Dave, I think he's been challenged. See, Urban Meyer, he has talked about this game. He hasn't really run away from the topic of facing Steve Spurrier, and he has uh, been glowing in his remarks and his admiration for the old yeah. ball coach as well. Here's Mitchell. He steps up in the pocket. Hit as he throws over the middle. McKinley couldn't hold on. It's incomplete. It would have been close to the first down. Instead, it'll bring up third down and ten. 
Well, Dave Baker down the sidelines. We look at uh, a shot of Vernell Brown, and that hurts the Gators secondary, doesn't it? Yeah, he broke that leg last week, Dave. Talked to him before the game. You know, he's such a great young man. We had a chance to visit him and his family this summer. He's probably out five to six weeks. He could make it back for a bowl game. He's not disappointed at all. He's here today simply because of his leadership and what he means emotionally to this team and especially to this Florida defense. The Gators use six defensive backs. Flag is down. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Sidney Rice. Flag down at the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. Steve Spurrier lost his visor and his headset. <laughs> As I see him walk out and uh, pick it up, put it back on. Yeah, they went to uh, they went to four wide receivers and uh, a legal formation against the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalties decline. It will be fourth down. Our Chick Fil A nugget of today's game. You take a look at the most wins by first-year head coaches at South Carolina. Steve Spurrier has a chance to uh, tie for that with a win here today or next week against Clemson. And six and three at this point is, is still amazing. Oh, I that's, mean, and, and that's incredible. Little rugby kick. Josh Brown gets it away, and it's a good kick. Pressure came from the Gators, and it rolls inside the 10 and stops right there on the 10-yard line. An excellent kick by Josh Brown, but it was nearly blocked. So the Gators are backed up after the 49-yard kick. It's a 7-3 ball game on a glorious day for some SEC football in Columbia, South Carolina. Stay with us on JP Sports. First down and 10, Florida from their own 10-yard line. Deshaun Wynn, bad shoulder in off, and off, in that tailback for Florida. Didn't know how much he would play, if any, today. Pass batted at the line of scrimmage again, the second time that's happened today. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz, what do you got? Hey, Dave, I think you pointed it out brilliantly here in the first part of this football game. Chris Spleek is a very exacting kind of quarterback, and he's thrown some passes in this first part of the game where he's tried to be so fine that I don't think he's got the velocity on the ball that he needs. You mentioned the one that was almost picked. It was a completion on third down right before the field goal. That ball was almost picked. He's had one picked off today. I'm telling you, he's got to get some hemp on that ball or it could be trouble for the Gators. Well, he's four out of seven right now, Buzz, with that interception that resulted in a South Carolina touchdown. Here's a little option. It goes to Marcus Mance, who has some running room. Manson run out of bounds. That'll be a first down. Jordan Lindsay finally pushed him out of bounds. Excuse me, Deshaun went on the carry. Now, what happens on this play is that Chris Leak is going to, he's going to draw the backer right there. You see how he draws the backer? Now he tosses the ball out. When you draw that backer, now the backer just runs after it. Good block downfield, two good blocks downfield by the uh, receivers, and it just freed up Manson. Excellent choice. Deshaun went before the shoulder injury, had 109 yards against Georgia, career high for him. Lance Lori, Jordan Lindsay converge for the tackle. The first and ten line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Talk about tough tickets. <laughs> yeah. oh, Jamie Speronis, who's the uh, uh, assistant, uh, administrative assistant to Steve Spurrier, he and Coach Spurrier are both uh, still on the Florida Gators season ticket list. And he said this summer both of them got letters from the Gators ticket office saying that Due to uh, high demand, there wouldn't be any tickets available for them to purchase for this game. Which was so much. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Lee. Fires. Puts some heat on that pass, but it's incomplete. Looking for Tate Casey to tie it in. Pressure came from Lance Lowry, forced him out of that pocket. Boy, and if you're Coach Simpson, number 10, you've got to read so much. You've got to read the run now. You've got to get across and look at the strides he has. He's got the tight end on that play, on Casey on that play, and he just gets that hand. He is explosive, Dave. He's got great coverage speed. In other words, when that ball is thrown, he makes up ground. Third downs today, Florida 0 for 2. On the year, this offense... Right in the middle of the pack, sixth in the Southeastern Conference at about 38%. 
Here's Luke. He's got some running room. A lot of green grass in front of him. A first down at midfield. When you have a quarterback that's able to run like that, it puts so much pressure on your defensive line. You're trying to get a push up there. Everybody's trying to get up. And watch, Leak looks downfield. Pocket kind of collapses a little bit. Now he sees it. He knows what the down and distance is. No idea to pass that football. Just get as many yards as you can and get out of bounds. Heads up play. A gain of 16 yards for Urban Meyer's spread offensive attack. And a little spread option. Uh, He's going to stick with it despite not having the kind of talent that he really wants to make that operate. And part of the problem is they don't have a lot of depth at wide receiver. They need about 12 good, healthy bodies there, and they just don't have it. Late. Going deep. Has a man off the fingertips at the 10-yard line of Chad Jackson. Wow. You talk about the difference between a touchdown pass and an incompletion. This is unbelievable. When Chad Jackson reaches out there, the one thing you don't want to do is reach out too early. Receiver idle. Watch number eight. He's going to come on long. He's on that post pattern. Now look at the separation. Now, look where that ball is. I mean, that goes right off his fingertips. And talk about a guy oh. who has sure hands. He has 64 catches <laughs> so far this year. Tyro Nix, the defensive coordinator. That his team can't afford to give up big plays. That would have been one had it worked. Dallas Baker in the game at the top of the screen. And it looks as though Florida will call a timeout on second down and 10. Urban Meyer now not very happy. With that timeout, we'll return after these messages from the University of Florida and the University of South Carolina. When you don't have a lot of weapons, you certainly like to see one back you weren't expecting. That's number 81, Dallas Baker for the Florida Gators. Dave Neal, cracked rib last week, punctured lung, but he was out on the field and Urban Meyer was visibly excited. He says this kid is the toughest kid on the team, and that's why he's out there on the field right now despite that injury just a week ago. Handoff goes to Manson, cuts it back inside, dropped at the 45 of South Carolina by Ricardo Hurley, the senior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. USC's uh, defense has struggled stopping the run this year, Dave. They are ranked 11th in the league, giving up about 173 yards a game. That's 87th in the country. They're going to have to uh, button down the middle of that line of scrimmage today. Absolutely. That's exactly where the strength of Florida's running game is, Dave. Look at our Hummer scoreboard. How about up the road, uh, Clemson on top of Florida State. Big day for the uh, state of South Carolina and the state of Florida. Third down, and we'll call it five. Now they're going to bring some heat. Yep. Manson, Coach Simpson came from a safety position and stops Manson in his tracks. That'll bring up a fourth down and five. Boy, what a move. Coach Simpson was on a blitz. He came through the line unblocked, and he just all of a sudden just came. We're going to see him right here. He's right next to the umpires, right in there. And he's going to go through the line and watch the adjustment down the line. You see how he goes right down the line, blitzing on a quarterback, and then all of a sudden, watch this, shoot through, unblock, can't reach him, and he just reacts right over to the ball carry and picks up Manson. Good adjustment. Simpson leads this team with 81 stops. Eric Wilber's punt. That is out of bounds. That is not a very good punt, and... They will mark it at the 23-yard line. A 22-yard kick. So we've seen a 25-yard punt and a 22-yard punt today so far with 2.51 to go in the first quarter. Taking a look at Urban Meyer and how he uh, compares to Steve Spurrier when he took over this Gator team in 1990. Coach Spurrier went 9-2. and two. Of course, Urban Meyer has a chance to do that. Biggest difference comes uh, about a touchdown more per game, and you have about 450 yards of offense for Steve Spurrier's first year. Urban Meyer's total offense, about 376. And off goes to Mike Davis. Kyle Jackson with the stop. And Dave, that first down is so important for Steve Spurrier's offense. You don't want to come up second and ten. So you run the football, they pick up about four or five yards, nice carry. Now you get that second and short situation. It gives you that run-pass option. You can mix it up if you're Blake Mitchell. Second and ten. A six-yard gain. Oh, and four, Jumped the 
across the line of scrimmage. Blake Mitchell checks with his head coach. Steve Spurrier sig signals in the actual play now at the last moment. And it's a good one. It'll pick up a first down. The handoff goes to Davis. The old check with me with Coach Spurrier, and it worked well. Yes, what he saw was a safety blitz, and the safety ran right on by Davis. See the safety come right up in there? He runs right on by, and Davis just burns right up through the middle. Picks up that first down. Back-to-back -back runs. Let's check in again with Dave Baker. Buzz? Uh, Dave, Steve Spurrier actually tried to change that play again, but couldn't get Blake Mitchell's attention. <laughs> <laughs> Glad he didn't, Buzz. <laughs> Slipped at midfield and a ball incomplete. Blake Mitchell limping around a little bit. You know, I was down on the field. You see the black around his ankles, Dave? He doesn't get his ankles taped. He wears these ankle braces that they pull up tight. They have Velcro and you pull them up tight. You see Mitchell one out of eight. Not great stats last week either against Arkansas. 12 out of 25 for 142 yards, but he did have the huge touchdown to end the third quarter to Kenny McKinley, which was the difference in that ball game. Play clock down to three. It's a awesome running room on a bad ankle at all to the 40-yard line. He picks up a good one five, maybe six on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. Hey, that time I saw Jeremy Mincy just pour off the ball. Good block there, good pick up there by Mike Davis, the back on the play. He just guessed it. The snap count, guessed it right. You see Antonio Hefner there, the backup quarterback. They've moved him a little bit to wide receiver. That Coach Spurrier said he's just a great athlete. We've got to get him on the field, but he is the uh, number two man if something were to happen to Blake Mitchell. Hefner did start against Auburn earlier this year. Sidney Rice spins, and he fell forward. That'll be good enough for the first down. Jarvis Herring will get credit for the tackle. But Sidney Rice got that on his own. Boy, he made Reggie Lewis 22 miss. Watch this come in here. Just dances around inside. And look at that stretch on the tail end. That's the difference between making a first down and not. Should have been tackled right there. He should have been tackled, and he stretches and makes that first down. Jarvis Herring got up after making the stop and turned around and said, Reggie Lewis, you got to make that play. <laughs> You're right. First down and 10 now for South Carolina. Into the end of the first quarter. Over the middle of the rise. He's hit at the 43-yard line, and that's another... Gamecock first down. Kyle Jackson with the stop. So Dave, that's a little deeper slant than we yeah. saw last week against Arkansas. These are about 10-yard slants. We saw about 5-yard slants last week. Exactly. We saw Arkansas play that defense where they took that away from them. Now they're getting that little deeper slant in Sidney Rice. You throw it in his direction, that man's going to come down with it. Well, that'll do it for the first quarter of football in this matchup between Steve Spurrier and his alma mater. And through 15 minutes of play, Spurrier's Gamecocks have the better of the Florida Gators. It was an interception return by Chris Tucker that set up the Gamecocks' first touchdown. It's a good one in Columbia. Stay with us. North Carolina and williams Bryce Stadium. Urban Meyer making his first trip into Columbia, South Carolina as the head coach of the Florida Gators. Trying to get his defense to slow down South Carolina on this drive. Place. 35 yards to this point. Offing it up to Rice. A flag comes in. D. Webb's on the coverage. See if that'll be holding against uh, the Gators in the secondary. Well, I was watching that call the whole way, Dave. See how he comes out and does that hard count. Then he looks over Spurrier. That's Steve Spurrier. Spurrier signals in the play. Then all of a sudden they run the play. That is really interesting. They're making Florida commit the defense that they're going to try to play. Personal foul, number 15, defense. Hit to the head. Tells him 15 yards and first down. Well, Dave, I guess trying to hold up uh, Sidney Rice, the line of scrimmage. That, that little jam. 
That came at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah, it, you'll see the flag there come in. You're right. I think what he did is I think he jammed him, Dave, and got up into the face mask. Yeah, it's a line of scrimmage. That's a big penalty that moves the ball down to the 27-yard line. There's been a lot of cornerback with the one-on-one -on -one with Sidney Rice. Slick Mitchell. Looking for Carlos Thomas seeing his first action. And Carlos, the true freshman out of College Park, Georgia, suffered a concussion against Tennessee. Did not play last week, but he is back on the field. And that's good news. Look at our McDonald's first quarter stats, and pretty even. The time of possession is something I was going to keep an eye on all afternoon. And uh, I got to think if I got to think that your uh, your Steve Spurrier, you got to be happy oh. to have it for seven minutes in the first quarter. But there's Carlos Thomas, Dave. It's good to have him back yeah. on the field. It was a dangerous play. Uh, it was a scary situation in Knoxville a couple of weeks ago. Glad he's healthy. Red Mitchell. Firing, looking for Rice. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I didn't think Sidney Rice even saw the ball. He didn't, Dave, until he turned around. You talk about an adjustment. He is on an out pattern. He's getting jammed by the cornerback right in your screen. Webb has got him. And at the last second, look at him turn around. He turns back to the inside, and there's the ball. A gain of 19. Yeah, great blocking up front. You see the big man, Jabari Levy. Good block, keeping him out there. He's on Mincy. That's a struggle right there. What a catch. Jake is Terman driving inside the five, down to the two-yard line. That'll be second and goal from the two after a six-yard pickup. Steve Spurrier said, I like Jacob Terman. He runs hard in there. He's a tough kid. Puts his head down, and how about that? Just grinding for yards. Terman, the senior out of Washington, Georgia. He's been uh, hampered by a sore ankle. If you look at that Florida defense and what they gave up to Vanderbilt last week, the Commodores were a perfect five out of five in touchdowns inside the red zone. Of course, that's brought to you by the ultimate tailgating experience. On the generator. Now, don't get fancy. Across the middle, Sidney Rice drops it. Flag comes in. D. Webb can't believe it. D. Webb cannot believe there's a flag on the play. Well, Florida is so committed to that one on that man on man coverage that they're trying to cover Sidney Webb one on one. And I'm going to tell you something. He's going to get separation, and he's big. Pass interference. Gets the defense. Number 15. Since the ball is on the two yard line, we got half the distance to the goal. It is automatic. First down. It's a post pattern. He just slants, and you see how big he is. And Webb's got that hand in there. Evidently, he's got that hand up inside there. That's a close call. That's yeah. all I'm going to say about that. It was close. Oh, I, I don't doubt it's close. <laughs> yeah. But that official standing right there, nobody gets a closer view than I, him. I'm just going to say it's close. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. First and goal now. Now, don't get fancy. Just pound it in. Touchdown, South Carolina. Davis Terman, his third of the year. He follows his fullback to see him go right through the line. Good pick up there by the fullback and rip it in. All you have to do is get a seam in there, and Terman is going to find it. Good blocking up front. I think that was Stafford, number 39. That was the fullback that was leading on that play. Josh Brown's point after is up and good. And how about this? South Carolina leads 14 to 3 with 13 31 to go in the second quarter. In all nine games that South Carolina has played this season, the team that scores first has gone on to win. It's happened six times for the Gamecocks this year. They scored first and on to pick up the victory. We'll see what will happen here. They lead it 14-3. Ryan Suck up to kick it off. And it's taken by Marcus Manson in the end zone. Pretty good drive for South Carolina, helped by a couple of Florida penalties that kept it moving along quite nicely. It was a drive that uh, went 10 plays, 77 yards, and ate up uh, almost four and a half minutes off the clock. And that successful drive means another $500 to the SEC's education initiative, courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company, called 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. And you, too, can be a successful driver. 
And Dave, you know, I look at that score, 14 to 3, South Carolina. I want to tell you, this game is not going to be a 14-point game. It's going to take a lot of points because Florida is a very strong team. I look for them to come back and come back strong. Nearly picked off. Keystone Moore was the intended receiver, and he fell down, and Mike West came flying in and nearly got his hands on it. He might have gotten his hands on it. I think he did get his hands on it. 44, look at him come in there. Oh, yeah, he got his hands on it. Receiver wide open, Dave. I think West, what he did is I think he just made an, an adjustment on the play when he saw him open. West, a young man that lost his starting position to uh, Darrell Davis. That linebacker spot. Deshaun Wynn. In the game, alongside, he's done more. In the backfield, let's go in motion. Wynn gets the inside handoff, and Wynn gets a couple on the play, but that'll bring up about a third down and seven, possibly eight. Stanley Doty makes the stop along with Ryan Brown. Interesting South Carolina and getting a lot of second-team players in there. You know, Mike, uh, Mike West is a second-team player, as is Ryan Brown. Getting an opportunity, get some snaps early, give your starters a little bit of rest, keep on switching in and out. Now I think they're going to a 30 personnel where they've got three down linemen. Third and seven. Here comes plenty of heat. Leak feels it and drops down at the 15-yard line. Ryan Brown with his first sack of the year. Absolutely. When you've got that many men on the line of scrimmage, you just don't know where they're coming from. Look at the number of red shirts. And Chris Leak just falls down. You see people running up the middle. Ryan Brown was 43. Now look at the number of people. Everybody coming in a gap. They've got people coming everywhere. And look, he just falls down right here. He, he's got nowhere to turn. Can't even flush out of the pocket. South Carolina leads the league in sacks with 27 on the year. 16 different players have reported at least a sack so far. Eric Wilber to punt it away. Wobbly kick that will hit at the 42. It's a gator bounce, but it doesn't even cross midfield, so South Carolina with excellent field position on this drive. 32-yard punt. But coming up next week, we got a couple of games for you. As you'll have a chance to see the Georgia Bulldogs and the Kentucky Wildcats from Athens, Georgia, and Vandy, or Ten Vandy and Tennessee. You'll get one of those two games in your area. Of course, Vanderbilt-Tennessee game could decide a bowl for both of those teams. And log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regions Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. Of course, a huge week of SEC football today in Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Auburn, along with this game in the center of the college football universe the past five six days. Yeah. Inside the 40, Earl Everett with the stop. But Dave, one of the things that South Carolina did was make a couple offensive line changes. They moved Mashawn Goddard, who's normally a tackle, into guard. They moved Meredith up to tackle, and they moved Coleman over. So those offensive changes are really working. They're controlling the middle of the line of scrimmage, and that's why Mike Davis is able to run like he does. Second down and three. Out of the eye formation, the handoff goes to Davis. Makes a man miss, falls forward for the first down. And I think that's the biggest change we just saw on that play from Mike Davis from, say, week three to this week, and that is the first guy is not bringing him down. Well, he's turning. You see that twist, and we talked about that challenge that Steve Spurrier gave him. That challenge is, let me tell you something, there's somebody right behind you who wants to run. There's another player, and Steve Spurrier, he has a way of doing that. He never gets down on his players, but he will challenge them. See, there's that hard count. Now he looks over to see the audible, make the adjustment, all on the line. Big hole off the left side. Mike Davis breaks the tackle. He's to the 20, to the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Kyle Jackson finally runs him out. A gain of 24. 
when I thought Brandon Seiler, number 40, had him in the hole, and he broke out of that tackle. Watch the adjustment that Mike Davis makes right here. Good block right there. Now, you're coming here. There's the hole, but you go to the outside. You see that daylight now? Get to the outside. You're not going to arm tackle him. And how about Mike Davis's play? Well, you talk about explosion in the hole. Make a miss. That was Siler's miss tackle, number 40. Davis, eight rushes for 58 yards today. Of course, had the opening touchdown of the game. Davis gets it again. Runs into the heart of that defense. Gets a couple on the play. Dave, so many times we talk about how the passing game is complemented by the run. The running game actually opens up the pass. When you make them play honest up front, all of a sudden you get that passing game will open up. And Mike Davis, boy, averaging over six yards a carry, that's wonderful. Last two games, he's had 32 rushes for 150 yards. That's about four and a half per carry. But today he has stepped it up another notch. Just a true freshman from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. But a flag has come down. Here's Rocky Good. Sideline warning against Florida's bench. So first warning. Boy, it just hasn't gone the Gators' no, way. No, it certainly has not. They've sputtered. They drove that long drive and only came up with, they drove a 60-yard or 70-yard drive and came up with just a field goal. South Carolina, very opportunistic. When they get good field position, you've got to get points out of it. Fifth play of the drive coming up. The previous four have all been on the ground. Mike Davis has had the honors. They'll go to a four receiver set. Bad snap. Gets past Blake Mitchell. A flag is down. Somebody on the offensive uh, line and the defensive line yeah. popped up about the same time. It looked like Marcus Thomas might have gotten a head start on that Gator defensive front. And now if your defense, you point there and say, oh, he did it. <laughs> yeah, Marcus Thomas came, came in a little too early. Yeah, you can't guess that snap count. You can't guess the snap count right there. You see him just jump out there. He just guessed the snap count and the ball. And, and actually, Blake Mitchell wasn't even ready for the ball. That ball, he was going through his cadence and his call. Happened last week. They lost 30-some-odd yards on a bad snap that went over Blake Mitchell's head against Arkansas. But that penalty moves it to uh, inside, just inside the tent. So it'll be second down and, say, about three. He's got Sidney Rice way at the top, but he's Mike Davis inside the five. Stopped at about the three, the original line of scrimmage. Marcus Thomas with the tackle. Yeah, when you have success running the ball like that, you just decide, hey, we're just going to put our head down and run. Good push up front. Good reaction by the defense. That's just a that's just a good match. Now, third down, two. Boy, this is tough two yards down here. This is where you line up and buckle up, and you better be ready if you're an offensive or defensive lineman. Florida has been very good in creating those turnovers. They would love one here. They've recovered 13 fumbles, and they also have 13 interceptions this year. Time out on the field. We'll return after work from your local station. We'll see what Steve Spurrier has in mind on a third down and a short three. The Gamecocks can pick up a first down at about the one-and-a-half yard line. Dave, what do you do? Give it to uh, Davis. They've run it the entire time on this drive, which is uh, five plays long. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd just tell them, just follow that fullback. See that little seam. Give it to him, and I think I'd run it. That's what they do. Davis stops short of the first down. He'll be wow. fourth in about a yard from about the two and a half. Marcus Thomas with his fifth tackle already today from his defensive tackle position. Boy, and I know Steve Spurrier wants to go for it in this situation. And he will go for it. But I'll tell you this, uh, Charlie Strong's over there saying, yeah, go ahead and go for it. There's Charlie Strong, the former D coordinator here at South Carolina. South Carolina only four, three out of 11 in fourth down conversions this year. For Florida, don't jump off sides. Turbin from two yards out. His second touchdown today. David, how 
about this offensive line. You talk about blowing them off the line, single back, big man on big man. I mean, Terman just put his head down. Look at this, good block down in there, crush. Terman just read that right there. I think that was Goddard 70 at that guard spot. I mean, he just crushed him down inside. One after his block, and here's a chance for the Gators to take it back. D. Webb on the run. I don't think anybody will catch him. Put the points on the board for the Gators special teams. What a turn of events. Boy, D. Webb caught that right in midair. When he put the burners on, that was just a dash for the cash to the goal line. You don't see that very often in football, that turnaround play. Well, it goes from a potential seven-point play to basically just a four-point turnaround. Marcus Thomas skies to block the point after, and D. Webb at the right place at the right time. They grade these players on loaf plays. <laughs> when they loaf on a play, they uh, are penalized by the coaches, but uh, no loafing on that point after attempt by the Gators. Absolutely. Good penetration. you got to count those linemen. They come in low. They get the penetration, and then behind them, those backs come up and jump up in the air. That was a low kick. And how about Webb just taking off with that ball? D. Webb's had a tough day. They have locked him up with Sidney Rice yeah. this afternoon. A couple penalties against D. Webb, and he responded with... The blocked uh, point after taken back for the two points. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz? Dave, you know, something like that's the reason coaches never take anything for granted. I mean, South Carolina's got all this momentum down here. This place is electric. The extra points considered automatic, and then what do you do? You get the points off of a play you work on and work on when you're tired and you want to get off the football field after practice. And it's going to be interesting now to see what happens because at the 15-point deal, you're only a two-possession game, two-point conversion, and an extra point. And, Dave, it's the kind of thing that, that just may turn it around. It's got the opportunity to, anyway. Ryan suck up to kick it off. Taken by Manson, about two yards deep in the end zone. Manson to the 20, flags come down. Curtis Rice with a special teams tackle for the Gamecocks. Receiving team, number 13. Penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. And speaking of kicks, how about the Bell South kick for a million? Dream. Dreaming? Are you dreaming of a new plasma TV, Dave? No, I'd love to have one. <laughs> I bet you are. How about a gaming <laughs> system or a laptop computer? Sure. How about a million bucks? Bell South is giving one lucky fan the chance to win it all during halftime of this year's Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Log on to bellsouthsports.com to enter the Bell South Kick for a Million sweepstakes, and you could win an extreme bundle of home entertainment equipment and a full million dollars. Here's Deshaun Webb over the 15 to the 16-yard line. Jermaine Tyler with the tackle. Picks up about six on the play. Boy, heads, heads up play there by Wynn. He actually was going to go strong side and cut back against the grain. Saw the uh, the pursuit of South Carolina coming across the grain and cut back inside. And he didn't even have an idea that he was going to play, Dave. They just, uh, the Gators have uh, sustained so many injuries. Bad shoulder for Deshaun Wynn. Held out of contact all week. Urban Meyer told us it would be really a Friday night, uh, almost game time decision on Deshaun Wynn. But he looks pretty good to me. Moore, he'll pick up the Gator first down and get out of potential trouble, backed up in their own end at the 13-yard line. Jermaine Tyler with another stop for the Gamecocks. And Dave, when your offense is just sputtering, they're not they're, they're driving the ball but not picking up points. You just get that defensive turn, and all of a sudden you get a little bit of momentum. Now, for Florida, I can tell you this, they're not going to panic. They're going to stay right with the offense that they planned all week to use. Chris Leak is a just a competent quarterback, very just very concentrated back there. Hey, just let him run it. Manson alongside Leak in the backfield. A play fake to Manson. Leak rolls near side. Fires the pass caught at the 32-yard line. That'll be a gain of about six on the play. That's Jamel Cornelius. Coach Simpson on the coverage. 
Cameron, I really like Leak when he rolls out, either left or right. He's got great fundamentals. He squares up his shoulders. When he runs the ball, he's going to come to the strong side this time, out to his right. Watch him just square up there and deliver. See, that's a beautiful delivery. You have to take time, find that wide receiver, find the one that's open. Very, very good quarterback. Second and short. About two yards for the Gators. Here's the pitch. Manson takes it across the 35 to the 36. First down, Florida. Simpson with another tackle for the Gamecocks. You, you, you look at this Florida offense, Dave. They ran 83 plays last week against Vanderbilt in one of the best games we've seen oh, all season yeah. long that went into double overtime. 42 rushes, 41 passes. And you look at somebody like Chris Leak in that offense, Dave, and he's somebody that's sitting back there. He's a drop-back quarterback. All of a sudden, you're asking him to run option plays, make tosses, make pitches, and do a lot of different things. And it's taken him a little while to adjust it. We talked about how comfortable he is now. Leak to fire. Pass is caught by Chad Jackson. He spins out of it to the 45 of South Carolina. Lance Laurie brings him down, but that's a big gain and a first down for the Gators. Boy. They were so lucky this time, South Carolina, because Jonathan Joseph, number nine, misses the tackle. Look at this. He's off to the races, and look at Laurie, number 48. He is hustling to the ball. That's why coaches tell you never quit on a play. Missed tackle, Chad Jackson. He could have been still running. Chad Jackson came in with 63 catches. He already has five today, so 68 on the year we're not even to halftime after the 18-yard pickup leak will throw it again over the middle incomplete looking for dallas baker bad ribs punctured lung but baker laid out for the football just couldn't hold on this is a post pattern right here left your screen that way and watch him lay out there watch baker just about come oh i don't know how he didn't catch that football he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. you got to come up with that one again. Look downfield, lay out, and look at Baker. That ball was, that was well delivered, right on his hand. I just can't believe he's even playing. Oh, I know. How do you get a punctured along the play? Deshaun right Wynn avoids a couple of tackles, still on his feet. Nice run from Deshaun Wynn. Picks up nine. He'll be close to the first down, probably about a half a yard shy. Jermaine Tyler tripped him up in that secondary, but South Carolina had a chance to get him for a two-yard loss. Well, it's tough to bring down Wynn. He's one of those compact runners. Watch these quick feet. Take that little... Now, see how he goes back against the grain? That play is designed to come this way, and he goes back against the grain, and they're going to have a measurement. I thought he made the first down. This is the time of the year when everybody's hurt. Yep, he did make that first down. See that grass on the field, boy. It looks good on that camera shot. It looks just as good in person. Oh. A couple of years ago, the surface here in uh, williams Bryce Stadium, uh, not very good, just to be kind about it. But they have uh, done a great job with this playing surface the last two seasons. The eighth play of this drive coming up. It is a match 54 yards. It started at the Gator 11-yard line. We talked about Florida not having any panic, Dave. They're not panicked. Let me tell you something. They're right in their offensive flow. Couldn't have picked a better time for this Florida offense than right now. Three-man front for the Gamecocks. Inside handoff. It's a couple of... Say four yards for Deshaun Wynn. Dustin Lindsay with his second tackle today. Now you're running the ball well. You're picking up three, four, five yards every down. You know, you, you want to mix it up and throw that ball downfield, keep that defense honest. But when you can pick up four to five yards, if you're Urban Meyer, you turn around and say, hey, just keep on doing what you're doing. Big men up front are controlling the line of scrimmage. Jackson goes in motion. Play action to win. Leak. Wide open down the sideline. Touchdown, Florida. Chad Jackson. It goes 31 yards. He beat Chris Hampton to the end zone. What a throw and catch from the Gators. And a great drive that started at the 11. Boy, and Chris Leak just, he must have said, his eyes must have gotten wide open when he saw how wide open Chad Jackson was. 
Chris Lake, he's got to be excited about that. Things finally got a good drive, an 89-yard drive. They didn't panic. They went right back to their offense, and things are starting to crank up for Florida. One after is up and good for Chad Jackson, his eighth touchdown of the season. He is first in the SEC in receptions per game, 11th in the NCAA. He's a pretty good player. Nine-yard drive. Four and a half minutes resulted in a touchdown. Chris Lee, Chad Jackson, 15th touchdown pass of the year for Chris Lee. Oh, he gets five interceptions. Jonathan Phillips to kick it off for the Gators. Looking at the sixth by Noah Whiteside. And he is hit at the 17th. Let's go back, Dave, and take a look at that last touchdown. What happened? Really interesting pattern. Here is Jackson right here. What he's going to do is he's going to run out that way. They're going to come down inside and clear it out. And Jackson just, just loses them. Watch this right here. Now, they're equal right there. Now, see they're equal right there? Jackson's got them. Right there is Jackson. He's got them. Man, Chris Leak's eyes got really big when he saw Jackson come out of there. Good control by that offensive line, giving him time. Well orchestrated play. Now Carolina now. At the 17. That handoff gets nothing. Mike Davis stopped at the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Mincy with his first tackle today. The senior out of Statesboro, Georgia, leads this club with 57 stops. That'll bring up second down and 10. Well, I was watching Brandon Seiler, number 40, middle linebacker. Look at this. Come up, play across the face, get in there. Boy, you want to talk about good tackle? Get that form tackle. Look, you get the red. No way. You ain't going anywhere on me. I've noticed you... those linebackers. They love it when the D linemen get them by the ankles, and they can come in and lay oh, the Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, that's called <laughs> laying the wood. That's uh, Z time. Laying the wood. Out of the shotgun. Mitchell over the middle. Looking for McKinley. Pass it caught. Gaining about five on the play. Boy, that was a tough catch by McKinley against back against his body. Blake Mitchell just uh, not having a great day as far as finding those wide receivers, but uh, moving the football. Got to keep moving those chains. McKinley, a young man, they think has big play yeah. potential here in South Carolina. Actually, yeah, that's the first pass caught by somebody other than Sidney Rice yeah. today. Well, Rice, you, you get so used to going to Sidney Rice. Number four, you have such confidence. But you're going to have to use Kenny McKinley. He's got speed and he's a freshman. Here's Rice right here. They'll go the other way with it. Flag comes in, looking for McKinley on that slant. All the Gators throw up their arms. At the same time, Reggie Lewis on the coverage. Oh, yeah, that... And Urban Myers. <laughs> Number 22, defense. That's a spot foul and an automatic first down. Urban Meyer not happy, to say the least. No, I don't think he'd be happy on that play. Let's take a look at it. This is the lockup. There, they see the hands right there? You can't do that. You cannot put those hands up in there. Reggie Lewis, and look at uh, Blake Mitchell. He turned around and said, yes, we need a first down. You know, it's the old thing. You can hit the guy at the line of scrimmage in that little zone, but once the ball's in the air, you got to get that's your hands a, you off. you got to get your hands back off. And that's you. a tough play for a corner on a quick slant. Exactly, and it's man-to-man -man coverage. We talked to uh, Charlie Strong about that man-to-man -man coverage. He said, we're not going to change up. We're going to play man-to-man. Davis gets the carry out of the 45 to the 27-yard line. Well, this fall, watch for the Geico College Football Campus Tour, a season-long traveling exhibit celebrating the 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time. Go to jpsports.com for more information and to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. You know, there was so much talk and anticipation for this game. You just thought something was going to go wrong, like it was going <laughs> to rain. But no, it is. No. I mean, you couldn't have drawn up a better afternoon for football. I thought I saw a cloud, but I might have been mistaken. Blake Mitchell comes out to a wide receiver on the near side. McKinley gets the uh, snap and hands it off to Mike Davis, who was stopped back inside the 25. He might have lost a couple of yards on the play. 
And that's an interesting call. What they do is they bring Mitchell all the way down here on the outside. There he is just coming into your screen. And then they just try to run a running play underneath. It's just to keep the defense off guard. Doesn't work. Florida's well coached, well schooled. Dave, it's a pay page out of the spread option attack of yeah. Urban Meyer. I mean, they do that with Chris Lee quite a bit. Put him out in a mm -hmm. wide receiver spot. Absolutely. And for Steve Spurrier, third down, seven, still 52 seconds. You'd like to get a field goal try. Timeout taken by Florida with 52 seconds to go at third and long coming up. You know, I think Urban Myers is saying, if we can stop them right here, we can get a punt, we can get the ball back at midfield. Maybe get it back, maybe they could get an opportunity. Don't take those uh, timeouts into the locker room. This Florida offense averaging 28 points a game, third in the league. They're sixth in rushing, sixth in passing, seventh overall. And coming off a shootout Saturday night oh. in Gainesville, Florida against the Vanderbilt Commodores. You know, we talk a lot about Chris Leak in that game, but didn't Jay Cutler play a marvelous oh. game too? You know, you, you talked to the coaches last, the Florida defensive coaches, and to a man, they said that was one of the guts here. Brilliantly played games by a quarterback they have seen in a long, long time. Let's check in with Dave Baker's down on the sidelines. Buzz. Hey, Dave, right over the ball. You take a look at number 44, Marcus Thomas for Florida. They say he not only fills the A gap, but the A and the B gap. <laughs> now, this is, this is truth now. They call his stomach scoop. I mean, he talks to this thing. He, he rubs his stomach. I mean, I don't know what happens with defensive linemen. Roe would have to address that. But I never rub my, rub my stomach, Buzz. <laughs> Well, my, here, my stuff is called skinny. <laughs> Here's yeah. a big play. Third down. Quick snap to McKinley on over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Well, that's going to depend on the spot. I think he might be a little bit shy of that purple line, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Florida will take their last timeout to stop the clock with 45 seconds left. When you look at that play, they made about seven, eight yards on that play. It looks like it's going to come up short. We see the purple line there, and it doesn't look like it's past that. But uh, that's a heads-up play because it takes a little bit more time off the clock, and now you can punt it away. Buzz, what do you got? Uh, okay, Dave, here you go. Now, people are saying, okay, why? if you're Florida, why not go ahead and get to the locker room? Well, it's because of what they've done with kicks. They got the momentum back by blocking the extra point kick, and if you remember earlier in the half, Josh Brown had a snap that skipped back to him on the punt that they almost blocked. This is exactly the scenario Urban Meyer wanted to try to take a shot here at the end of the half. Chad Jackson back at the 30-yard line to return for Florida. This is where you tell him to get it off. And he does, end over end. That'll take a big hop. Jackson will field it at the 17. He's got nowhere to go. Dave, one of the great things about that rugby-style punt is in college football, linemen don't have to hold up at the line of scrimmage to go cover a punt. In the NFL, they still got to hold at the line for a, a beat or two. In college football, they don't. So that little sidestep gives his coverage team an extra couple of yards to get down the field. And if you don't catch it, it takes that big hop. And it, that one resulted in a 52-yard punt. Yeah, about, probably about a 40-yard punt and a 12-yard roll. And you're right. It does give your linemen more time to run down there. And they almost always get the roll on that rugby-style punt. And that's been a, The rugby-style punt's been a hot topic the last couple of weeks. Is When does that runner, when he rolls to his right, become a runner as yeah. opposed to a punter? It's, it's, a, it's a topic that will be uh, discussed, I'm sure, in the offseason. And Florida takes a knee as the clock ticks down. South Carolina puts 20 on the board. Florida answers with a dozen of their own. It's a 20 to 12 game and 32 first half points. I don't necessarily know that we <laughs> thought there would be 32 in the no. first half. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Steve, you're getting this first half. You had the long drive against you there, but other than that, I got to feel like you're pretty pleased with what's going on. Well, we moved it a little bit and our defense played well except for that drive, but it's a long ball game as we know, so we can still win or lose. We don't know yet. All right, good luck, Steve. There's Steve Spur. You can tell he's a little agitated about that last drive. But other than that, a great opening half for the Gamecocks. The Gators still in it, though. It's 2012 in Columbia. I said it's been 39 years since South Carolina beat Florida. It was back in 1939 was their last win. So that covers 66 years, losing 14 straight to the Gators, including a game back in 1966. Steve Spurrier was playing quarterback for 
the Florida Gators, and we talk about today's quarterbacks, Blake Mitchell and Chris Leak. Uh, some numbers to compare. Not a great start for Blake Mitchell. Five out of 13. He actually started the day one out of eight, so these numbers have gone up down the stretch. Steve Spurrier said he'd love to have his team be able to score 24 points today. He's already at 20. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, yeah. But I don't think that, I don't think the way this game's going, I don't think that's going to be enough this afternoon. No, he's going to have to score more points, Dave. This is a very powerful Florida team, well coached, and it was evidenced by that 89-yard drive when they when they really needed it. First time South Carolina's taken a lead in the locker room since September 24th against Troy. The Gators will take it out to the 20-yard line. And with that, let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. No panic on the Florida sidelines, Dave. Had a chance to talk to Urban Myers. He came back on the field. Dave Rowe knows how big he is on field position, and he pointed out two things. Their first possession when they got it at midfield didn't do anything with it. Then they had a couple of punts that didn't travel any more than 25 yards. If they can get back to play in their kind of field position football, he believes with the breaks they've gotten, they're right back in shape. take their opening drive in the second half from the 20-yard line. They've already had an 89-yard drive today. First handoff goes to Marcus Manson, the freshman from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who had 179 total yards against Vanderbilt last week. Had a career high in rushes with 18. He also had a career high in receptions with six in that game. Uh, became the player that Urban Meyer was hoping for. And it was really, I don't want to say fumbling issues early on, because he really didn't fumble the football, he was carrying the football. He was fumbled prone, meaning they didn't put the football in the right spot, so the coaches were scared to put him in the game. Exactly, they, they want that ball carried where your, el where your elbow is below your wrist and the ball is in tight, and you never, never carry it, just loose. He had it tight on that carry, gets about a yard or two on the play. Morris Lambert with the stop. Defensive end to give him a little bit more speed on the edge. And Dave, now you see the adjustments, the adjustments on defense and on offense. What can they do? They, they're, now they're going to go to a 30 defense. They'll bring in somebody that's a little bit more of a pass rusher in what they think is a pass situation here, South Carolina. Chris Leak has had a lot of success back there, moving around the pocket, finding his wide outs. And his line's giving him a lot of time. Third and four, Jackson in motion to the near side. up in the air and here comes a flag yeah there was a bump however inadvertent that it was but a bump on Kenneth Tooks before the ball got there and the question becomes was it catchable that ball was sailed way high that's interference number 30 defense on that first down that's on Terrell Davis yeah I thought he had inside position on this play watch right here Oh, yeah, that's definitely hit. You can't do that. That's almost undercut you. It's almost undercutting him, but that ball sailed high. The crowd doesn't like it, but uh, that was close enough to be uh, to, call, to be ruled a catchable ball as well. So that'll move it out to the 36-yard line. Dave, you know, we talked about field position. It's, it's awfully hard for an offense to drive 60, 70, 80 yards. A lot of times they stop themselves. So South Carolina's got to make them drive a long way. Don Moore, a true freshman. Moore, a young man that's coming out of high school in Arlington, Texas, averaged almost 10 yards per rush. <laughs> 10 yards? Yeah. That's the first time, the first down, every time you give him the ball. Here at the college level in the SEC, he's carried it uh, 29 times for 156 yards. That's about a five and a half yard average per carry. Still pretty impressive for a true freshman. Leak rolling, rolling, firing over the middle, wide open at midfield. Looks like Chad Jackson, excuse me, that's Jamel Cornelius. Coach Simpson on the coverage. And that'll be a Gator first down. Now, I told you I like the way he will play action. Now watch him square out. He's going to find Cornelius. See Cornelius just turn around in that little soft curl zone. He just finds the open area, just curls around there. He's a good target. They catch the ball cleanly. That's just like a long handoff for Chris Leak. He does that so well. 12-yard pickup. Leak has completed 
Eight passes today. Six of those have gone to Chad Jackson. Billy Latsko has one, and Cornelius picked up the other moment to go. Sean Wynn to the 45, falls forward to the 44-yard line. You know, David, there are a lot of people that don't like that shotgun handoff, but actually it gives the back the opportunity. When Wynn gets the ball, he's about five yards in the backfield. He's got, he has those quick little feet. He just comes up there, he finds that little seam and darts through it. It's one of the only plays that you can run from that other than that toss where he runs along the line and sets up the backer. They've had success with it. Brett Bennett, one of the quarterbacks, came hobbling off the field for South Carolina, number eight, so... See if the Gators see it. They'll keep it on the ground. Sean Wynn to the 42-yard line, and that'll be a, about a yard and a half shy of the first down. We have third and short. You know, it's, a, it, it's so awkward looking at that play all the time as we look there at uh, Fred Bennett, who came up limping. But it's so awkward. We look at that play, and you keep on saying, well, how does that work? It works because the quarterback reads the fullback, then he reads the, the defense, then slam down. If he slants down, then the quarterback pulls the ball out, keeps it, and he runs. So it's, a, it's an option play. Third and a short two for the Gators. Here comes Jackson in motion. The handoff goes to Deshaun Wynn. He's got the first down and more inside the 35 to the 34. Dustin Lindsey with his fifth tackle. But a first down for Florida. Boy, and Randy Hand, 74, got a good block on that. He's the tackle. Number 74 is going to come off the ball. Now, at the point of attack, you see right there, he's lined up on him, just drives him. He's about four yards off the line of scrimmage. That's what the big man, there he is, right there. Good block downfield. Deshaun Wynn doesn't look... Very hurt today. No, no. <laughs> you know, he didn't play uh, much, if any, against Vanderbilt last week because of that bad shoulder. And he looks pretty here. healthy this afternoon in Columbia. Jackson in motion again. This time, Manson gets the handoff. Down to the 32, maybe. Yeah, they'll spot him about the 30 three-yard line. Now, if you're South Carolina, you've got to make some adjustments. You've got to slant your line a little bit, take Doty and Tucker and slant them on the angle, and then hope for that you can, as you look at John Thompson and, of course, Tyrone Nix, that's the defensive coordinators, you've got to get something going in the, in the middle. You might have to bring a backer on, like, a rush or something, but you've got to get some action. It was Ron Cooper next to uh, John Thompson. Cooper in charge of the secondary, so uh, kind of a three-headed monster, actually a four-headed monster if uh, uh, Dave Womack, former defense coordinator at Arkansas, also went on this coaching staff for South Carolina. They're trying to find a way to stop this Florida attack right now. Keystone Moore inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line, and this Florida offense is just pounding it right now in South Carolina. Yeah, it's a 30 front. They've got three down linemen trying to play with four backers. They're not getting control up the middle. Rissler that time, number 79, gets a good block. Look at that block out there, big man. Turn them out, and then you just play that, and Moore just kind of puts back on it. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz, what do you got on Keystone? Dave, no surprise about this. Urban Meyer told us the most improved part of this team the last two weeks was the offensive line. He's riding those big uglies hard right now. I wouldn't do anything different. That handoff close to the 15-yard line goes Marcus Manson. Dustin Lindsay with another tackle. Seven for Dustin now in this game. Just wants his guys to understand the basics before they start doing more. Look at that red zone number today for the Florida offense. One field goal and one opportunity. That red zone look powered by the generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Well, you love to have six yards on first down. You don't do anything different. Here's Manson. Hit hard at the 12-yard line by Cole Simpson. Dave, one thing you're not seeing is you're not seeing South Carolina get any penetration on the line. They're all catching right now. See them all just catching? When you get the ball back there, you've got a clear hole. Just look for that hole. Find that little seam and guard through. Four, five, six yards per play. Don't do anything different. Just keep on banging heads, as Urban Meyer will tell you. The 12th play of this drive coming up. How about this, Dave? This, they're going on seven minutes to open up the second half. Deshaun Wynn is the tailback. 
play action to Deshaun. Here's Leak rolling out. Has Latsko touchdown. Florida, what a drive. What a fundamentally sound drive for the Florida Gator offense. And see what that pass, what that run sets up. Everybody starts playing that run, and then he does a run play fake action. Comes back weak side, finds him. He's going to play fake, come back to the outside. See, let's go. That's like about a two-yard pass. It's like a long handoff. He had the option. If Latsko gets covered, he can run it. Perfect call. One after is up and good. Billy Latsko has been playing some defense earlier in the year. They move him back to a tight end. Now they got him playing a little fullback. He's just all over the place. And they're lucky to have him. First touchdown of the season. So Dave Rowe, Dave Baker, glad you could join us. As Florida has pulled to within one. Dave John Thompson talking to his troops down there. What, what do you say to a team that just gave up an 80-yard 12-play drive? Well, you tell them they got to get tougher up front. Got to get more penetration. They didn't bring any blitz pressure on it, but they ran that ball down there. Through. Talked about what a drive. Five-yard line goes Carlos Thomas. Still on his feet to the 21, and that's where South Carolina will have it for their first possession of the second half. That was an impressive drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, and 10 of those plays were rushing. I mean, just a, just a really solid drive, capped off by this Chris Leak touchdown pass to Billy Latsko from 11 yards out. And that successful drive means another $500 to the SEC's education initiative courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company called 1-800-SAFE-AUTO, and you too can be a successful driver. We'll see how Blake Mitchell drives this offense here in the second half. But that had to be a painful drive for Steve Spurrier. The offensive mind of Spurrier had to sit there and watch that unfold. Here's Mike Davis to the 26-yard line. Davis hit by Tony Joyner. You see what uh, Florida's offense has done since South Carolina scored their last touchdown. They have outgained the Gamecocks. Oh my goodness, by 161 yeah. yards and outscored him 16 to nothing. And it all started with that two points, uh, the blocked extra point returned by D. Webb for two points. Absolutely. We talked about taking that from, for granted. It just sucked the air, even it, though oh, it, yeah. they scored that touchdown. It just really deflated williams Price Stadium. This might bring some air back to the fans. Mike Davis takes it out over the 30... Four, they'll spot it close to the 35. Kyle Jackson trips him up, but that will be a first down. Good, good, good toss right here. Good speed outside. He got a good block coming down inside by McKinley, number 11, and picks up positive yards. The one thing that you don't want to do as we look at Mike Davis go back into the huddle is don't panic. Don't get three and out. Don't try to force the ball in there. Blake Mitchell is an extension of Steve Spurrier, and Spurrier knows right now he cannot force that ball into trouble. Out of the eye formation on first and 10 from the 35. Blake Mitchell, 5 for 13 in the first half. Play clock winding down. They just do get the snap off. Going it up for Sidney Rice. He makes the catch. Big man on 
big man. That's what I love. It's just fun. This is nothing fancy. Line them up. Oh, you see right there the head in the neutral zone? That's what they're calling. How about Mike Davis putting that head down, driving in there? Second touchdown today for Mike Davis. His third of the season. This point after is up and good. How about that? The Gators go on a seven-minute drive to score a touchdown. The Gamecocks answer back in less than two. Back after this. Well, in the 26th meeting between these two schools, South Carolina has scored the most points ever against a Gator football team. The 27 points today. That's their previous high of 26. 27 to 19 is our score here in the third quarter. 5.59 to play in the third stanza. Ryan Sutton to kick it off. Ball at the one yard line by Marcus Manson. Manson's got great speed to the 30 yard line to the 31 yard line. Well, during the first half, we asked this all to text to win SEC trivia challenge question. And which SEC East team was the only one to defeat Steve Spurrier's Gators in Gainesville? Only one team went to the swamp and picked up a win, and it was in 2001. And if I'm not mistaken, that might have been his last home game before he uh, departed for the riches of the National Football League. That was, as a matter of fact, I was just told that was his last home game in the swamp. Tune in next week for your chance to play Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge. Lee comes back. It's his first pass of this possession to Jamail Cornelius. That'll be a first down. Jermaine Tyler on the coverage. Cornelius came in with 21 catches on the year. I just love that little play fake action. I tell you, Chris Lee, he looks really sharp to me. I mean, he just really squares up. I love the way he runs with the ball. He's very effective on the, he looks downfield, looks off his wide receivers. We talked about him being comfortable in this offense. He's comfortable. Yeah, he, when we saw him about the first month of the season at home against Mississippi State yeah. as, as the Gators take a timeout, had a bad shoulder, wasn't sure. throwing it well, didn't look comfortable. And uh, it is a different quarterback than we saw a month ago. Chris Leak and the Gators trying to get back on the board. They're down eight. Back up to work for your local station. At williams Bryce Stadium in a 27-19 game. Gators looking at first and 10 from their own 45. Here's Moore with the handoff. Breaks a tackle. He's down Moore still on his feet down to the 45. That'll be close to the first down. It looks like he'll be about, about a, a half a yard shy of the first down marker. Jordan Lindsay with the stop for the Gamecocks. Now, one of the things that South Carolina's done is stop that 30 defense. They've got seven missed tackles, and they actually add two on this. One right in there. You can't miss tackles like that. And there's the second one. Well, the other one was a little bit earlier. But uh, they made an adjustment. They did away with that 30 defense where they had three down linemen. They brought back the four linemen, see if they can control the line of scrimmage. They bring the sticks out a couple of yards from that sidelines and the measurement, and they are a little bit shy. A little bit. <laughs> you know, there's so much talk this week about this football game coming in. Both coaches kind of played it down, didn't really talk about it a lot. When we asked Urban Meyer, you know, how, what kind of week has it been, he says, you know, nothing you know, out of the ordinary because I come into the office early in the morning, I sit down with my coaches, look at videotape, meet with my players, go to practice, stay around after practice, and I go home, play with my kids, and see my wife, and do it all over again the next day. So it didn't really affect him very much. And, you know, Steve Spurrier downplayed it as well, but you know that it means more to him to face the Gators, and I think Urban Meyer facing the Gamecocks. Absolutely. You're hard to see you. Yeah, I mean, you had so many years of success that Steve Spurrier with the uh, Gators. The one thing that you don't want to do is go out here and, and bum out. You right. Know, you know, he, he's got friends from, from Florida and uh, all over the place coming here. He said one thing they had to do was wear neutral colors. This the offense. <laughs> going to be five yards, still second down. You see Steve. Steve Bristol yeah. popping up a little bit early, but it was still, I, I go back to that story, the fact that uh, Jimmy Speronis, the director of football operations, it's Coach Spurrier, getting that letter from the ticket office in Gainesville <laughs> this summer where they held season tickets and says, sorry, we can't accommodate you because of the demand for this ticket here in Columbia for this game. I wonder if it started off, <laughs> dear sir. <laughs> dear ticket holder. <laughs> and handoff 
goes to Deshaun Wynn, a flag down right in the area of holding. When I saw Stanley Doty just get up there and just kind of move his hand, kind of like it was on against him, like he was held. Holding, 74, offense. Number 10 yards, previous spot, still second down. We'll vote for the toughest play of the week and a chance to win a brand new Polaris ATV in the Polaris Tough Play of the Week contest. Visit PolarisToughPlays.com and watch clips of this week's toughest plays. Vote for your favorite and enter to win. Well, the Gators backing up here. Second down and 16 from their own 40. First down marker is at the Gamecock 44. A little screen for Chad Jackson. He's got nowhere to go. To the 41, and he's dropped by Oris Lambert. That is a great play by a defensive lineman. Lambert, 51. He's the defensive end. When that ball is thrown, what you do if you're a defensive lineman, you've got an angle of pursuit. 51's going to come down the line of scrimmage. You're going to see him hit in there, and then boom, right down. Look at he's coming from a flash right here. See him break down. Boy, that's one that you get a positive on. Third down and 15. The Gators are looking at a second down and very short. Next thing you know, they're looking at a third and 15. Now you got to get pressure. You got to come. Four man rush. Gets to Chris Lake. He drops the football. It's loose. The Gators have it, but it will be fourth down. Jordan Lindsay with the sack and the forced bubble. They came with pressure on the inside, and that allowed to get one on one top of your screen you're going to see him come all the way around the outside and look at him reach out and he just kind of reached out and grabbed chris leak's right hand heads up play third sack of the year by jordan lindsey and the 27th sack allowed by the gators this year uh, ranks them 10th in the league and sacks given up that's an odd formation everybody on one side of the ball Away. It's a high kick. Eric Wilbur taken by Jonathan Joseph at the 26-yard line. So 2.31 to go here in the third quarter, and the South Carolina Gamecocks lead it by eight. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. And Dave, the only thing that stopped Florida that last drive was the yellow flag. That was what really helped South Carolina's defense, and sometimes you have to be lucky. Now, can Blake Mitchell find Sidney Rice? Can he drive down the field? Can they sustain a drive? We don't want to go three and out. They only had the ball for a minute 55 in this quarter, but it was good enough for a touchdown. The nine-yard line goes Mike Davis. Davis getting a lot of work today. Rushing the football for the Gamecocks. 18 carries for 82 yards. I mean, he has uh, been a workhorse this afternoon. His career high came last week against the Razorbacks over in Fayetteville. When he rushed for 89 yards in that game. And that gave us a chance to watch another youngster in this league, Darren McFadden of Arkansas, who was putting on quite a show as a true freshman in this league. Second and eight, Mitchell. High step drop, has to roll. Has some running room. Mitchell to the 35. They'll spot it at the 36. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Jeremy Mitzi ran him out of bounds. Well, uh, Steve Spurrier has to like this. He doesn't like his quarterback running, but it was a heads-up play. See him switch that ball to the left hand in case he gets hit. Knocks the ball out of bounds. Picks up good positive yardage. And he didn't force the ball into any kind of trouble, Dave. And it brings up a third down and one. Out of the eye formation, Davis the tailback. I think everybody thinks Davis is getting it. He does. Off the right side. He's got the first down. Earl Everett makes the tackle from his linebacker position for the Gators. 
And you know, we talked about that move as we look at Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator. We talked about that move inside. Good fullback move right there coming leading through. We talked about Nashawn Goddard moving into guard, Meredith moving up, and that has really paid dividends for South Carolina today. They've gotten a good push up front. First and 10 line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Now, if you're South Carolina, you don't have to score. You just have to keep the ball away from Florida. If you're Florida, they put pressure on you. They come after you. They make you give up the ball. There's that hard count and audible again. Play clock down to three. And Mitchell hit on the spot. Marcus Thomas got him before Mitchell could even let go. How did he get through there in about a second and a half? His second sack today for the big fella out of Jacksonville, Florida. Boy. Big Marcus Thomas, he just pours through there. I mean, look at Mitchell. He doesn't even get to stand up right there. And bam, he is right on his back. You talk about taking that inside. Oh, he took the outside gap. That was a great move. He did like a little, we used to call that the bullfighter, where you take that outside swim, move over top. Big man gets in there. He's blocked that extra point, Dave. He's got two sacks today and seven tackles. Wow. Thomas came in with just 31 tackles on the year. He's got seven today. Mitchell has some time, but now he's flushed and dropped again at the 30-yard line. This time, Jarvis Moss, the first man on the spot, the sophomore out of Denton, Texas, with a big play for the Gators defensively. And Blake Mitchell came up limping a little bit, huh? That'll be the end of the third quarter. South Carolina leads it by eight points. It has been everything we expected and then some. Stay with us for the final 15 here on JP Sports. 27 to 19 as we begin the fourth quarter. A great day for football. It's been a great game. We've seen a lot of different things. And it's Steve Spurrier and Urban Meyer, the Gators and the Gamecocks. What more do you want? There's a lot on the line besides just some pride between these two schools as they're both trying to stay in the SEC Eastern Division race. You know, Georgia is sitting in Athens right now paying close attention to this game. Here's Mike Davis to the 40. On third and 18, he got walled right at the 40-yard line. D. Webb came flying in there. I didn't know if that was him that made the big-time contact, but we'll see right here. Watch the head snap back. Little screen underneath. Now watch his head snap back. Right, bam. Oh, man. Low and high at the same time. Oof. Brandon Seiler in on there with D. Webb to make that stop, so the Gamecocks will have to punt it away. Florida's put a lot of pressure on these punts. End over end kick. Chad Jackson lets it bounce. Decides not to pick it up. It'll roll dead at the 16-yard line. Take a look at our Gatorade stats through three quarters. And, you know, this is very similar to what happened last week for the Gamecocks in Arkansas when the Razorbacks held the ball for 11 minutes in the third quarter. The Gators did pretty much the same, and they now have about a six-minute advantage, about a five-minute advantage in time of possession. And that was an area of concern for Steve Spurrier. Now he's going to have to watch his defense and see if they can slow down this Gator attack. And the crowd's trying to become a factor in the end zone, screaming and yelling in back of Chris Lee. Marcus Manson. Manson to the 27-yard line. Terrell Davis, number 30 on the tackle. Dave, they are just going to keep that up. That's been that little slant off that uh, off the uh, shotgun, and he just hands it to him, and he's on a, just a dead run. They have opened up holes all day long. Randy Hand, Lance Butler, Rissler, Washington, and, of course, Gregory in the middle. They have controlled the line of scrimmage. South Carolina cannot afford to let them just march down the field. Manson now 12 carries, 52 yards on the ground. Leak. And is dropped at the 23-yard line. Oris Lambert with his second sack of the season. His first this afternoon. Boy, sometimes they're not pretty, but they certainly are effective. 51 is Lambert. He gets in there. He as Leak fakes right there. And he comes to you. See Lambert 51 on the top of your screen. He just kind of freezes in there and gets just a hand. Just enough to trip him up. Force him to go down. And then, of course, 
He's got three sacks. Boy, South Carolina should say have three sacks. That's a good day. Gamecocks came in with 26 sacks defensively. That's tops in the SEC. Now they, sorry, Dave, I was just going to say they go back to that 30 defense again. Leak to throw. Pass is caught at the 29-yard line by Chad Jackson. For Jackson, that'll be his eighth reception of the game. Jackson is just a pass-catching machine. Oh. <laughs> he is, you're right. When that ball touches his hands, he owns it. He's one of those just sure-handed receivers. Eight today for 92 yards, and on the season, now he has 71 catches. It is third down and eight. Now, do you come with pressure? There's that 30 defense, only three down linemen. Spins again and dropped at the 21-yard line. Oris Lambert again, his second sack of this series. What a series for South Carolina. And I think that number 45 on the right gets a hand on Leak and disturbs. See right there, he kind of gets a hand on him. And then Oris Lambert comes across and he gets a, he makes the sack. Teamwork, working together, three-man rush, and they got to him. Here's Eric Wilbur back to punt. Wilbur averaging 31 yards on three punts today. Line drive kick, fair catch called for by Kenny McKinley, and the Gamecocks will set up at the 43-yard line. 11-19 to play. Gamecocks holding on by eight points. 27-19, South Carolina with the lead. Since we have started the second half, the Gators had dominated the time of possession roughly about 13 and a half minutes to about five. Here's Dacus Turman in the open field down to the 43-yard line, and I was going to say that the Gamecocks need to keep the ball on the ground and, and have a substantial drive four or five minutes because that defense has got to be getting tired. Yeah, but not when you do this. Look at that hole open up. I mean, we're talking about a hole open up for Turman. He just put the burners on. He had, didn't even have to make a break on it. 15-yard pickup gives Turman 25 on the day. Of course, he has a couple of touchdowns from short yardage situations. And now South Carolina looks at first and 10 from the 42. I wonder why he came out. Mike Davis, the tailback. Straight drop from Mitchell. Mitchell throws. It's out of bounds. Receiver was in the area, so no flag on the play. It's just incomplete. Pressure came from Jeremy Mincy, a young man who was, they've, uh, we talked to during the middle of the week, very confident in his ability. He says he wants to always have about 15 tackles a game, which is a big number for D. Lyman. But the Gamecocks have done a nice job on keeping him from making some huge plays today. Absolutely. He's just quite a force off the ball. And uh, as we look at Dacus Terman, get his uh, ankles. He may have sprained his ankle on that. You see the ankle braces that they have there, Dave. What they do is you can tighten those up. It's not like tape. It's actually an ankle brace. Now, what they do is they're going to take off the... Uh, take off the sock and retape his ankle. But back to Mincy. Boy, he is a force. I, I really like that style of play. Incomplete, and a flag comes in late. D. Webb on the coverage of Sidney Rice again. Rice got up immediately and said there's got to be a flag, and it took a moment or two, but one finally came. Well, on the play, we talk about this under throw where it's Sidney... Sidney Rice turns back, but you can see right there, we're not talking about playing the ball. We're talking about playing the man. You can't do that. And Webb has had all his hands full. Just a little early. Look at that. He's just throwing them down. It's almost like he tried to do it nonchalant. Everybody, <laughs> no, I was going to say, what you say? Sidney Rice does a nice job on shielding the defender with yeah. a 6-4 frame. I've noticed that on these routes is he's always got great position, making it difficult with those long arms and big shoulders to get around and knock it away. Well, it's almost like a basketball skill, you know, where you box the guy out. And, of course, we all know about his great hand, so that doesn't hurt. Eight penalties for the Gators. They are 11th in the league in uh, penalties this year. They are averaging about 68 yards a game. Not a very good number. A lot of South Carolina, I just run it. Mike Davis off the left side inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Kyle Jackson makes the tackle. 
Incox, if nothing else, would love to have a field goal here, make it a two-possession game. The first and ten line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Buzz, what are your impressions of Sidney Rice? Boy, Dave, he's something else. I'm going to be interested to see the last big play that they ran. That was an intentional underthrow that Steve Spurrier told us about. Something they put in the playbook because he can go get it so well. Be interesting to see if they come back with it down here. On this play, they'll hand it off to Mike Davis to the 20-yard line. And that may be Mike Davis's best run of the day. Did you see him look back and see the backside cut? He got a good block up on the front by Deshaun Goddard. But when he saw that backside seam, Dave, he just exploded back there. Good vision into the hole. That's what you want your running back to look for. Mike Davis having back-to-back -back career games. Actually, it's three straight games. He's posted new career highs in rushing against Tennessee. He set a new standard for the youngster. When he rushed for 61 yards, went for 89 last week. Timeout. Steve Spurrier trying to get the timeout. They do so. Dave Rowe, you said Mike Davis had to step it up. I'd say the young fella has. Take his term and back in the game for the Gamecocks. Sidney Rice in motion. Mitchell will throw to Rice on the back row. Blake Mitchell knew it. Steve Spurrier knew it, and he, they knew they had a chance on that yeah. play. Inside the red zone today, South Carolina has been pretty good. Four touchdowns and four opportunities. They came in second in the league in touchdown percentage in the red zone at 69%. So that red zone powered by Honda generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. 37-yard field goal coming up for Josh Brown. We've got about 90,000 people holding their breath on this. One. And it sneaks in the left upright from 37 yards. So a 30 to 19 game and 11 points. South Carolina lead with 9:04 to go in the fourth. 30 to 19, the field goal makes it an 11 point game here in Columbia, South Carolina. 9.04 to go in the contest. Kicking off Ryan Suck up for the Gamecocks. Kevin Dickey standing at his goal line. Marcus Manson also back deep for the Gators. Manson lets it bounce in the end zone. That'll be a touchback out to the 20 yard line. And Dave, you look at Nathan Pepper, who was inserted into the special teams unit on field goals this afternoon. Scott Morgan normally snaps on field goals, but he ran into uh, some troubles off the field. Is suspended. They were going to use Ike Crowfoot, who's holding here. He also snaps on punts, but they like the way Crowfoot handles snaps on field goals and didn't want to break the rhythm. So instead of using Crowfoot on field goals, they brought in Nathan Peppers, and boy, that, that decision paid off. A low snap, and he handled it extremely well. Deshaun Wynn on that carry. I'll tell you one thing. We talk about special teams being special. That is special, my friend. When you take that ball and you do what he did, pick it up off the ground, and you're concentrating, not trying to get your hands kicked, because that guy's on, he's moving forward when he sees that ball snap. That was huge. Down, whistles blow, play is stopped. Looks like somebody on that offensive line popped up. Dead ball, ball start, number 79 on the offense. Finish. Five yards, remains second down. That is the ninth infraction against the Gators this afternoon. What about the only thing that has stopped this Florida offense is that yellow flag. That, that figured big in that last series when they right. held them. And here it comes again. Listen to this crowd. Leaks in the end zone. He's got to go up and tell them what the snap count is. Leak going deep, looking for his tight end. Casey, it's incomplete. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. And Casey might have had a little bit of an advantage on that play, but 
It fell incomplete. It'll bring up third and 11. And you thought that crowd was last, like the last play was loud. Again, pass is caught at the 28-yard line. They'll mark it at the 27. That's three yards shy of the first down. That was Dallas Baker covered by Jonathan Joseph, and that'll bring a fourth and three. Let him catch it in front of you. That's what defensive backs say. They throw to Dallas Baker. Look at the good coverage coming back by Jonathan Joseph. He comes forward. He plants. He comes forward and doesn't allow that tackle to be broken. And on fourth and three, here come the Gators, backed up at their 27-yard line. Leak throw, passes, caught at the 32. A huge call, a huge catch, and a huge throw. Means first down, Gators keep moving. Chad Jackson. Oh, my goodness, can this guy play some football? Well, you go to your star, and that's what Chad Jackson is. Look how clean it is. Good coverage. He gets hit right in the back just as he catches it by Mike West. Good concentration. Look the ball in. What a call from Urban Meyer tell you. with seven minutes to go in the game from his own 27. Now they'll hand it off to Marcus Manson. You know, Last week, South Carolina stopped Arkansas in a similar situation at the 30-yard line. Got the football back and scored a touchdown, but Urban Meyer didn't even hesitate. There, was, there wasn't even much of a discussion on that Gator sideline to go for it on fourth and three. Well, he knows he needs two scores, Dave, and he's, he, the last time uh, South Carolina drove that ball, they kept it for a while. They do something to get a spark. return for 48 yards now comes up with a sack six foot one 290 pounds and can the big man rumble number 98 comes off that ball i mean he gets untouched look at him he's in the backfield and chris leak oh man unbelievable great penetration you're going to see him come off the ball right there And 15. Pass is caught at the 33-yard line. Chad Jackson again for Jackson. That's his 10th catch. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage, but that is well shy the first down. That'll bring up about a fourth and eight. And Dave, what's really interesting is seeing the defense that Tyrone Nix and John Thompson, what they're doing is they've gone to a two-deep zone where they're saying, you are not going to beat us long. Here we go again. Well, you did it on fourth down on your 20-something. Listen to this crowd. As the clock moves, closer to five minutes to go. And you talk about seeing somebody run down your throat. South Carolina brought pressure. Top of your screen to the left. Look at Chris Leak sitting back there. And I mean, that's not an easy catch. That's right down on the ground. Watch the pressure that Chris Leak sees. He's got no time to look down. He throws to an area. Great concentration there by Cornelius. First and 10. Leak passes overthrow looking for Chad Jackson. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. How about Urban Meyer? A couple of fourth downs on this drive. They convert both. Look at Lee, 16 of 25 for a buck 86. He's not really going for the big home run as much as he did in years past. Last week, he completed 32 passes. The longest completion was for only 16 yards. Well, Urban Meyer and his staff came in here and they said, hey, we came to win. They didn't come to look good. With four and a half minutes left, they need two scores. This drive is closing in on five minutes, and they've only made it to midfield. 
Deshaun Wynn in at tailback. He'll get the handoff. Wynn keeping his feet moving inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line, but the clock continues to churn. Two timeouts left for Florida. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Hey, Dave, you know, the interesting thing about this drive is the one thing that Florida's got working against them is they got no Sidney Rice. I was talking to Urban Meyer before the game. This is the first time since the Gators played Louisiana Tech that they've got four guys healthy enough to go a wide receiver, and that's with Dallas Baker making a miraculous comeback this week. Good point, Buzz. On third down and three. Lake again fired. Cornelius at the 34 down to the 32-yard line. Jonathan Joseph with the coverage. The clock will stop to move the chains, but it's at 348. Uh, and you know what? If I'm South Carolina, I'm not that upset. I'm going to let him catch that ball in front of me. I'm going to let him run the football. Look at our Aaron scoreboard. Ole Miss on top of Arkansas by 10. Are you kidding me? What is that? Oh, oh man. Four, three, Kentucky over Vandy. And Memphis on top of Tennessee. A crazy day, folks. <laughs> A crazy day in this league. Lake looking to the end zone. Looking for Dallas Baker. It's incomplete coverage by Jonathan Joseph. Joseph been a busy man on this drive. Best news of all, I think, for Florida is it finally stops the clock at 3.24 and everybody can catch their breath. Yeah, us included. What a marvelous drive by Urban Meyer. I mean, he did. And Steve Spurrier's got to be looking over. That's something that you would think Steve Spurrier would do. Two fourth downs. Dave, I was just handed the probably the, the numbers of the game to this point. This is the 13th play of the drive that has taken taken a total of 5 minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. It's a substantial drive, but not at this point of the game. Yeah, no, no, exactly right. <laughs> you don't want it with uh, 324 left. It's so loud in this place, nobody heard the whistles blow. But a delay of game, possibly. We'll see. A timeout just before delay of game taken by Florida. Second down and 10. 3.22 to play in the game. Chris Lee out of the shotgun. Pass is caught by Baker. Down to the 20. He's knocked out of bounds. That'll be a Gator first down. Joseph on the coverage. Baker with a broken rib, a punctured lung. <laughs> and the fact that he's even out there is amazing. And he gets stuck in the back. Watch this when he catches it. Stuck in the back right there by Jonathan Joseph. Again, Baker coming off, just driving him off the ball, trying to get to, trying to get some depth, and he curls back in. From the 21. Gators need to hurry up and score if they're going to. 3.16 to go, and they only have one timeout left. Play clock, plenty of time, it's at 9. Leak steps up, looking, looking, firing, looking for Baker. Incomplete. He bobbled it out of bounds. He held on, but he never had complete control. Incomplete. Second down. Boy, in South Carolina's playing this defense. They've got two deep on the zone. And Jonathan Joseph over here by himself on Baker. Look at that. He almost catches that ball. The official rules him out of bounds. This is interesting. Watch this, Dave. One hand, he catches that ball. He's got it. Wow. That's a close call. You better believe that's a close call. What a concentration. Chris Lee thought it was a completion. No word from the replay booth. Doesn't matter now. Here's Lee spinning again, looking, looking, firing over the middle, looking for his tight end, Casey. Incomplete clock down to 3.03. As you look at John Thompson, a co-defensive coordinator. Urban Meyer, what's his going through his mind at this point? Boy, good pressure here. They get good pressure on the outside. Lambert and Leak spins around away from Lambert. And look at him square up and almost completes that. Good man-to-man -man coverage right there. And it's interesting. They're playing a zone deep and then trying to cover underneath man-to-man. -man. You see how deep those men are way to the, way to the back. Well, don't, don't even worry about the third down part of this drive because you know Urban's going for it. Absolutely. He is... Uh, not wasting any energy here trying to get this in the end zone. Lee whistles again. Flag. Right near the goal line. That could be a delay of game. Delay game. 
Ten infractions now against Urban Meyer's team. Boy, he's going to talk about that in the post game. I, you, Looking for Baker, overthrown. It is fourth down and 15 coming up. Here's your ball game. Dave, you need two scores. Do you kick the field goal here and try to hold for the uh, touchdown, or do you go for the touchdown? That's a tough decision. Well, You've got to have two scores. Here it comes right now, the field goal unit. And you've got an excellent field goal kicker, Chris Hetlin, who is 9 out of 10 this season. As a matter of fact, he missed his first field goal last week against Vanderbilt. Only a 26-yarder. This one's from 43. Gators need it if they want to stay in this game. And it is dead solid perfect. That'll make it an eight-point game with just under three minutes to play. Hold on, folks. This will be an exciting finish. 30-22. Fourth quarter football from Columbia, South Carolina. Dave Rowe, do you do the onside kicks in an eight-point game? You've got 251 left, one timeout. I think you have to kick the onside kick because you can stop them three times. You've got that one timeout, but I think you have to take a shot at that uh, onside kick. Wow, look at that score drive. Day seven. I mean, it looks like, good on paper, oh, but it just chewed up six minutes. Here's the onside kick. Kenny McKinley falls on top of it rather easily. So South Carolina will have it at the 46 of the Gators. What you do is you put a hands team in. It's all your wide receivers and your backs. You tell them just catch the ball and get to the ground. Snuggle up, cuddle up. Really no time came off the yep. clock, 2.51. Now you tell that running back, don't fumble. That's Terman. Terman. Hit by Reggie Lewis. Time now for our Suzuki walk-on way of life. Featured player, and uh, we're going to focus in on one of the Gamecocks as Florida uses their final timeout. It's Tim Frisbee. Didn't see any action today, but they call him Pops around here. And what a special weekend, Veterans Day. The community here and really the state of South Carolina just uh, endearing toward their veterans in this part of the country. And Tim Frisbee is one of those veterans. Now he's 40 years old and young, uh, I should say young man. He's a young man playing college football in my eyes, but a uh, member of the military. And Across the way is another former member of the military, U.S. Marines, Cam Brewer, making his first trip with the Gators. He's a wide receiver, walked onto this Gator football team. He said he lived out a dream being a part of the Marines, and now he's living out another dream, playing for the Florida Gators in uh, special honor. So actually, let's just say both of those guys, Cam Brewer and Tim Pops Frisbee, are both our walk-on way of life featured players this week, and it's uh, great to have those guys in the Southeastern Conference. Frisbee actually got some action, has a catch this year. But Dave, back to the game, 242. Sitting there with my pencil thinking out, okay, now, the play clock, the play, run it down. They've used their last time out. Florida cannot stop the ball again. First uh, clock again. First thing you do is you don't want to run out of bounds. That stops the clock. If you can run up in there, and they got three or four yards on that first play, so you run it up there again, see if you can get three or four more. Just keep that clock running. Tell your guys, get up slow off the pile. Don't hurry to get back. Well, you look at the stats, and you kind of say to yourself, now the Gamecocks have done it to this point again. Hand off off the right side of the 41 goes Dacus Terman. The Gators have racked up 360 yards of offense. South Carolina 250. But once again, the Gators have only, uh, the Gamecocks have only run 49 plays to 68 for the opponents. It's been that story throughout. But Steve Spurrier says this guy's just play hard, play hard, and find a way. 
They're trying to find a way right now with 2.15, and there's nothing Florida can do to stop this nope. clock. And what's amazing is I look at Steve Spurrier and Blake Mitchell. He's just an extension of Steve Spurrier. He's got the same mind. He sees what Steve Spurrier sees. He plays, and Steve says he can throw all the throws. He doesn't make mistakes, and that's what Steve Spurrier did so well when he played the game. Mike Davis on the carry. So that'll bring up a fourth down. Jarvis Moss with the tackle, and they will uh, wait for them to start the play clock as the game clock is at 135. And I wonder if you just run the clock all the way down, maybe call a timeout with one second left on that play clock. But then you then you take your punt team and you say, okay, do not get this thing blocked. Make sure you got a safe snap. A lot of things go through your mind if you're a coach. And for Urban Meyer, wow. You know, do you do the rugby-style kick, or do you do a straightaway punt? Uh, you... I don't think you do. I think what you do is you punt that ball just as soon as you get it. You don't try to run or do anything like that. And Gators are having some problems trying to figure out who's going to be the deep safety. Here comes Chad Jackson onto the field. And Gamecocks will use that timeout. The Alltel SEC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Alltel. By Chevrolet. By Sonic Drive-In. By Advance Auto Parts. By Safe Auto. Here's the punt. Fair catch called for by Chad Jackson at the 24-yard line. One minute to play. 60 seconds for the Gators. And here comes a late flag at the 32 on the other side of the field. About 12 men on the uh, on the return. Remember you oh my God. Was that what it was? Or perhaps sidelines? Here's Rocky Good. Or now he's going to confer with the rest of the crew because it, this is against the Gators. They better get this one oh. right. Well, when you see that flag come down over there, Dave, I'm just wondering, you remember you talked about the confusion on the punt return. Did they have 12 men out there, or did was it a sideline infraction? I can't imagine sideline. Well, it was a late flag. Yeah. It, I mean, both teams are, Florida sending their offense onto the field. Gamecock sending their defense onto the field. Well, this crew is... Uh, Rocky Good leading the charge, our referee today, and, you know, I don't blame him for talking this one over. Get it right with 60 seconds to go in a one-score game. Dave, you know what? Legal participation, 12 men on the field, gets the defense. Penalty's 15 yards from the previous spot. That's your ball game. And that is your ball game right there. Dave, watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Where's twelve? I saw forty-two. <laughs> right in the middle is forty-two. I think it's right, right there. Yeah. Twelve men on the field. Holy cow. Unbelievable. An unbelievable finish to this football game. Penalties have decimated Florida. That's their 11th penalty of the afternoon. I remember Steve Spurrier saying if we could beat one of the big three that he talked about, and they did with Tennessee, Dave, now they've beaten Florida. Florida had the football in the second half for almost 20 minutes. But they trail by eight, and there's nothing they can do to stop this clock. Folks, it has been 66 years since South Carolina has knocked off Florida. Going back to 1939, they have lost 14 straight, including a 37-0 loss to Florida when Steve Spurrier was quarterback. And as the coach has said time and time again, this is a program that is having a lot of firsts this year. And you can put this one right up there among the top. And as you look at the SEC Eastern Division standings with this game now, South Carolina actually stays in the SEC Eastern Division race. But they will need Georgia to lose to Auburn tonight and then to Kentucky next week for that to happen. 
That is the ball game. The South Carolina Gamecocks have given Steve Spurrier his first victory as a head coach against his alma mater, where he won a Heisman in 1966 in a national championship in 1996. And the Carolina fans are going crazy in williams Bryce Stadium.